Hey guys, Will here, and on Tuesday I briefly mentioned that I picked up the Sony a6500 and after years of shooting with the Panasonic G7, I thought I'd just share my experience in switching, but first, let's take it for a spin. Ladies in a swimming pool, keep that shit for real. I'ma keep that shit a buck. Homie, why you acting tough? Did a hundred K subs, set the check and run it up. Bitch, I'm on some grown shit. Produce my own shit. I don't do no fucking features, then it's on my own bitch. Oh shit, they say Oliver, we want that old shit. Whew, that was crazy sharp. Which leads me on to the first thing that I absolutely love about the A6500. The Sony A6500 actually takes a 6K readout on the sensor, then downsamples it to a 4K image when in the XAVC S 4K 24P mode. I love the image quality that the A6500 provides, and it's a huge step up from the G7. Another thing I love about shooting Sony is having a log profile that actually works. The only one which was technically available on the G7 was Cine D, and I have many reasons to hate this profile, but above all, it just completely flattens the mid-tones, which in turn makes skin tones look like absolute crap. And by the way, this is baked in. No amount of contrast can fix this in post. If you don't take my word for it, go watch Dimitri's video. He perfectly explains it and quite clearly shows... Yeah, no. With the A6500 though, that's not an issue anymore. Stay still. Now I do actually use one other profile that isn't log, and that's EOS Pro Color HD. It sort of emulates the look that you get for a Canon camera, but for Sony. It's only $10, so I would highly recommend checking it out, and I'm probably going to do a video testing it soon. If you're not already subscribed, by the way, get subscribed to post every Monday and Thursday. Shameless plug over, back to the camera. I really like the layout of the Sony with the aperture and shutter speed being only a thumb stretch apart, whereas on the G7 you'd have to use your finger for aperture and thumb for shutter speed, not to mention how easy it is to change your ISO, something that I do all the time. There is one feature in particular that I absolutely love this camera for. Display markers. I edit and export all of my videos in either 21x9 or 18x9 and with the G7, framing was a bit hit or miss, but with the A6500 it's a breeze so there's no excuse for me to be doing any more bad framing in my videos. However, where do I put it? Compared to the G7s, the Sony's battery life is pretty poor. I've actually only ever had one Panasonic battery for the G7 and it always lasted me the day. I did take it to Menorca where it was constantly on and it never ran out of juice halfway through the day and I don't think I'd have the same confidence with the Sony's battery life. Now another area where the G7 beats the A6500 is with the touchscreen. While the A6500 now does have a touchscreen, it might as well not. You can't actually use the touchscreen in the menus or even in the playback button. I mean, all I've actually used mine for is to punch in when focusing. If this is a reason why you might be looking at the A6500 over the A6300, it really isn't worth it. I got the A6500 over the A6300 because it doesn't overheat like the A6300 does. At least that's what I've heard, I haven't actually had the chance to do a proper stress test on it yet, but that fact alone was enough for me to drop almost double on this camera. Now we're on to what I think could be the weakest point of the Sony. Focus. The focus peaking really isn't great, pulling in far too many readings even when set on low, making critical focus pretty difficult. Now, this next con really wouldn't be fair in a review, but this isn't a review, it's switching from the G7 to the A6500, so I can mention it. The tap to autofocus in manual focus mode was a feature I sincerely loved about the G7 when I needed to get quick focus, I would constantly use this. This is nowhere to be found on the Sony, so if I do want to use manual focus, which I do pretty much all of the time, I have to do it completely manually. I'm sure I'll adjust. If there is a way for me to get this feature, please leave a comment as I am still learning this camera. It's literally my second day with it. So if you have got any tips, I'd really like to hear them. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with the upgrade and I'm looking forward to shooting many more videos with it, learning along the way. Now, I still love my G7 and if I can get it fixed, I absolutely will. But as I said, I'm loving the A6500 so far. Thanks for watching, remember to hit the like button, if you want to see more content like this then please subscribe, I'm trying to hit 3k by the end of the year so every little helps. By the way guys, Monday's video is going to be absolutely crazy so be sure to not miss that. I'm done for now guys and I'll see you on Monday.